Hi, uh, this is Steve Dabola with the Cantor Falls uh, Historical Society, and uh, we're doing another interview for the Our Story program here in Cantor Falls, and it is my honor to introduce an old neighbor of mine, Art McKinley, who um, has spent his entire life here in Cantor Falls, and we're going to be visiting with him uh, about both uh, uh, working at one of the flour mills in town and uh, some of his uh, experiences in World War II. But um, on my right here is Jeff Jarvis from Waterville, Minnesota, grew up in Faribault. Uh, Jeff, for the last eight years, has been researching the flour mills of the Cannon River Valley. And so we asked him to uh, help us in interviewing Art uh, about uh, flour mills and uh, the history of mills in Cannon Falls. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Jeff and Art. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, it's, it's my honor to interview Art McKinley here, lifelong resident of Cannon Falls. And uh, as far as we know, the last surviving member of the flour mill era in Cannon Falls, uh, the last surviving worker. Um, Art, you worked at the Cannon Valley Mill after the war, correct? Yeah, I started there in 40, 40, August of 45. Okay. And you uh, immediately you worked in the, the, the back end of the mill? Yeah, where we're loading the boxcars with the, the everything went out by rail. Oh, went, okay. Very little by truck. Oh, okay. So somebody had to carry those heavy sacks of flour. Was that you? Well, we uh, see they, they they come out there. Uh, um, they had them loading carts, and there would be be five sacks, uh, five sacks on on, and, and and wheel them out to the out to the box car. They had a ramp that we were, you could drive right into the into the box cars. Oh, then, so they didn't have any forklifts for you then? No, that was all, all done by hard labor. Well, the mills of America were built on the backs of laborers just like you. Yeah. They were. Um, but you were involved in the packing too, weren't you? Packing of flour? Yeah, well, see, there was, uh, there was three guys that wor worked on that. Uh, there was one that... Uh, it was the packer, and and, and then he, and then, then then there was the sewer. He, he sold the sack, the sack shut, and then the, then 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 there was the guy that that uh, all, took the five five sacks uh, five sacks away. And see that, uh, that and he set them to uh, at the uh, at the, at a certain area in there for the for that. For how many sacks it was going to go into this box mm -hmm. box cars, and then later on uh, we'd come and and, and load load the uh, box cars. Okay. Uh, did you ever see any of the the box cars that came in full of coal? Because wasn't it coal that fired the boilers to what? run the mill? Uh, uh, what was this? Well, now? Uh, a lot of times these mills. Uh, they first relied on water power, but yeah. then they augmented the power with uh, steam, and they used coal to fire the boilers. Oh, the, they used electricity. Oh, did they? Okay, good. Okay. So they didn't use any water power in your day. But they did use water power when, they, when there was enough wa water. Oh, they did. Did you ever see any of the contraptions they used? To collect the water power at all, the turbines, or well, well, they had, it was an area, area behind behind the dam that they they let the water in and go mm -hmm. down down on down on an area to run run the, the power. Okay, uh, do you remember some of the the people's names that you worked with in the mill? Back. Well, there, well, there was a lot of them, like the. the um, Guys that wor worked on, uh, see, they worked three shifts. Uh, when I, the thing she was running full power, would yeah. be uh, three shifts. And there was three pa packers and three three sewers and three guys that hold the, the 
and uh, well, Art Bernstein was, was one of one of the one of the Packers, and there was a Leon Varn that that was one of the other ones, and and the Soars, well, one of them was uh, was Clarence Pagel. That guy could really uh, he was a, he was a, he was an expert. I tell you, I never he have, have, wouldn't have have much much. Uh, uh, Top of the sack to go on, but he could get he could do with it. I don't know how he did it, but he he was really good. So he to sew a sack shut, you'd have to hold yeah. the top together. Yeah, and yeah there was a sewing the sack set there, and the sewing machine would sit above it, and then they. So it took a certain uh, aptitude to be able to do that. It was yeah. kind of a skilled. Yeah. Yeah, uh, ability, right? Well, he had it. I know that. Of course, all the, the other sores were good too. But, but I, now, uh, were those paper sacks or flour? Or that, that, cloth. That, that was uh, um, cloth at that time. That that time, but towards the end, they went into paper, and and see, they converted the the the, the mill over, and then, and they. they uh, it, so that that they had shoots, um, uh, they uh, they run them on a on a belt and they come over and they drop drop down on a and and into a certain box box car, and uh, then then it was a lot a lot easier mm -hmm. because 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 uh, then then they had a um, a stand that. that uh, that the sack would come down on, and you just you just throw it on your shoulder and walk walk into the walk to the other end of the box car and and put it where on the road. That was a technology change that yeah. made your life easier. And they put all that stuff in 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 there, and it wasn't over uh, uh, over a couple of years after that the mill shut down, and they spent all that money for nothing. Oh yeah, now. At one, when I talked to you a few years ago, you told me that the mill you worked for did a lot of private labeling, even yeah. for like King Midas Mill. Yeah. Up oh yeah. They, Hastings. They, yeah, they they run a, a, at one time uh, that Hastings Mill had trouble of some kind and it was shut down. So so we run a lot of King Midas flour for King them. Midas. King Midas. Um, so the Vanity Fair flour actually became. King Midas flower, yeah, but no one knew the difference. No, no, because that was the same way the mother. Uh, a lot of the other brands that went out. I can't remember the brands now, but it was different brands that 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 we they'd, they'd run. So uh, the Cannon Valley Mill was the last flour mill to run in Cannon Falls. If, as far as I know, yeah, no, it had to be. Yeah. Um, do you know of any other mill workers that might still be around? God, I, I really, I really don't think so. There isn't many. If there is any, okay. There's a, um, there's Vernstrom. Uh, I worked with him for for a while, and then, and then he he come over to your place. You mentioned uh, Merle Tate. Yeah. Did you know that he carved the wooden gears for the Oxford Mill? Yeah. Do you know anything about his uh, Merle Tate's abilities? Yeah, he he was an inventor. I tell you. He was okay. Yeah, he well he even invented things for, for even for uh, uh, um, on, on his tractor and everything, you know, he had that lo loader where it come out of, I forget what was the pla place in the, in the city that 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 uh, he had inventions for that. So did he have patents or anything like that on any oh, I don't know if he had any patents on it, he should have. Because he had one, um, one deal he had, you know, on, when you, uh, on on their uh, your tractor, if you, you, you pull in the, the clutch, everything would stop. You couldn't do it. But he invent, invented a deal. It was on the on the fly flywheel that that he 
that he, 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 he didn't lose the power. He could he run, the, run the loader up and down with, with, uh, with, uh, without having, uh, having the clutch engaged. Can you talk a little bit about the conditions at the mill uh, in, in the department you worked at? Would you consider it was fairly safe? Because that was before OSHA, right? In 1940s? Oh, yeah. Well, um, well, it was, I think it was fair, fairly safe, I think. If you, if you look out for yourself. Okay. <laughs> Did you ever bring grain into any of the mills in town? Sell grain? Yeah, well, my dad did. Okay. He, he used to, in fact, he used to ra raise barley, barley that, that I know he sold. I don't know if he ever sold in India, the, the, the one in town, but he, you know, he, he used to haul it to uh, Red Wing, to the mulling company down there. Oh, okay. As I can remember, we, uh, we, when they got ready to, to, to um, to send the load, load out, we I'd be had to turn the damn crank on the on the on the, on the cleaner. <laughs> the crank on the cleaner to clean out the extra yeah. flour. Yeah, we've got to eat or, a lot of dust then. Okay. <laughs> Did you have dust collectors in that mill that you remember? No. So you, you had a lot of hazy white air yeah. in there where. Um, but after I got wor working at, uh, at, at uh, when the flour mill was turned into a grain elevator de deal, and I, I wore a dust mask all the while. Oh, I see. You brought home some pretty hefty paychecks from the mill too. Um, they didn't. They didn't pay too much. Yeah. I think uh, as I started there, I think I was making seventy-one cents an hour. I think it was coming to about twenty-eight bucks a week. <laughs> twenty-eight dollars a week is that? It isn't a lot of money, but yeah. it might be enough to bring home a little bacon. Yeah. Yeah. Kept uh, my head out of the water. Anyway. Kept your head out of the water. <laughs> Seventy-one cents an hour. Did you ever get any overtime pay? Oh, when I, um, not too much, but when I was in the grain elevator, I got a lot of overtime expected in the in the fall of the year. Okay, you don't know anything about the the grain going to Red Wing or anywhere. Well, uh, we for sent shipping. a lot of grain down on Red because most of that was corn, corn or beans. Oh, okay. So it was sold to Red Wing then. Yeah, and a lot of it went went up to the city too. You see, is that Cyril Grain had had uh, had a big elevator up there in the city. Oh, the Cyril yeah, Cyril yeah. Grain Company. Yeah. Okay. And see, they were their biggest holdings were in Canada. Uh, they had a big terminal up there at Port Arthur. A little bit about uh, Vanity Fair flour. Uh, did you know uh, some of the places that it was shipped to? Well, they they had um, more or less. The mo most of their the, they shipped that out by truck. They'd pay, like like the, the, around around Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So was it a surprise to you that the Cannon Valley Mill closed in 1949? Yeah, in no a way it was, but but like I say, it was like a. Like, like the Christmas present they gave us, they closed down right at Christmas. <laughs> uh, that probably wasn't the best present you ever but, got. Huh? But that was the only time I was uh, had to get work, workman's comp or whatever, whatever it is. I think it was twenty bucks a, a week we got for till spring, and then I got. Got in, got on in, on instruction, construction, and I happened to get on with a with a pipeline, and was going through uh, through North Northfield and on down through Fairbone, and I worked on that until until we got that was completed. And then I got a change. change uh, we had to join the labor union at 
So we, I transferred uh, me, me and, and Laverne Waltram, a, a good friend of mine. They, we uh, t transferred in, uh, into um, the one in the city, and then we got on. Uh, uh, there were big construction on the on the vet's hospital, and we hel uh, helped on that deal there and run a, a water. A, a, Lying down, down, down over from across from the VA down, down where the, the laundry was down there, and after we got that closed, uh, we knew we were going to be laid laid off. Why the labor con uh, man? Uh, there was on the other construction for the for the. He come over and talked to us and said, said uh, I seen you guys how you can work. He said, "I'll, uh, um, I'll, I'll put you on next next week. There isn't much work work to do, but they they kept us on till the main construction went went, and then I worked worked there until oh, that was that was in, that was fifty and fifty one, and I think it was in the the latter part of." Fifty-two. Why? Uh, that was after Cyril Grain had bought bought that place down there, and, and one of the one of the guys come and asked me if they if I'd run the elevator. So, 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 so that was close to home, so I could walk walk to work. So I took that and I stayed there for for over thirty years, and it was a good place to work for. Mm -hmm. Because if they weren't busy, real real busy, well, you still got your forty hour a week, and I really help my social security. I'll tell you that. What's your favorite? I, what's your favorite all time memory of growing up in Cannon Falls? Oh, well, one of well, one of them. I uh, I stood out here in the, in the, on the ent, uh, entry go, the other, other entry in here. And seeing Kelvin Coolidge go, drive drive by out toward, to the cemetery. How do you know he wasn't going trout fishing? <laughs> I guess he did like to go trout fishing, <laughs> from what I read. I can remember him going by here in that big old touring car with a stovepipe hat on. He probably wasn't going fishing then with that stove no. like that, uh, unless he had his bait tucked yeah, underneath he, there. He was dedicating that there uh, memorial out oh, there. Oh, the General Colville yeah, memorial. Colville, yeah. Now, uh, at one time you were a, a pretty good softball player, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. I got a. In fact, I got. We used to when we were in the rest areas in, in, uh, down in New Hebrides. We we won everything on the island island and they beat and then but they they took our team to play the all star navy team and we just beat beat them too. You were you were paid by the military to play a game. <laughs> yeah, that big wage is about twenty bucks a month. <laughs> you were you were paid a wage to hit a softball. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess that that could be a. Important thing. I got a plaque in there if you want to look at it. It was signed by our commanding general on that. What uh, position did you play? Third base. Oh, you played the hot corner. Mm hmm. Oh, boy. And we had a really good, good shortstop, so there, were, there wasn't many balls got through there. I'll tell you. What was your batting average? I don't know. It, 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 it was pretty good for it in that for that fast pitch softball because they had me. Bat, I batted cleanup on that team. Did you go out and chase girls or go dancing or? Oh, I, I suppose we went out and drank a little beer on, oh. on Saturday night. Oh, just a little, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was when uh, when a bottle. I think was about. Uh, about ten or fifteen cents. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. And tap beer was a big glass for ten cents. <laughs> okay. How many generations of McKinleys grew up on that farm 
that you were on out there? Well, my, my grandfather was there, and then, uh, then my, my um, dad, of course, bought the farm. Then my, then my older brother took that over. And it, the farm is still in your family? Yeah, my, 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 um, uh, my, my older brother's daughter bought, it, bought the part of the farm. Okay. So it's a century farm now. Oh, yeah, it was a century farm there for quite a few years. Okay. Now the... Cause, uh, go ahead. Because my uh, dad took over the farm uh, when my, bro my older brother was born in 1910, I think. And so my uh, grandparents, I think, moved to, t moved to town uh, in, uh, in 1911. Mm -hmm. Or um, 99, I think. Mm -hmm. In fact, in fact, I bought that uh, the house. That's the house I lived in. I bought that in '56, up there on the west side. You've been living in two different centuries yeah. so far. What is the uh, man's greatest achievement? <laughs> I don't know. There's been an awful lot of changes from when I grew up on a on a farm out there. Everything was bull labor, you know, everything. Now, the, all the equipment they got now. What Art. was your nickname in high school? I don't know. Right there. Where they at? Arthur S. McKinley, Chief Flaming Top. Yeah. Oh, I had bright red hair. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I got my temper. <laughs> Chief. So that was the class of 1935. Yeah. Cannon Falls High School. Oh. Oh. Would you care to explain what this is, Art? Yeah. 27th Infantry Division Athletic Championship. This is an award given to you in 1945. Yeah. That's signed by the commanding general. Who was your commanding general? His last name is Greiner. Greiner. You see, and then I played on the, and the cannon bear, with the cannon bears here too for years. Steve Dabble here again. When I visited with Art about uh, doing this filming and um, uh, the flour mills of the uh, Cannon River Valley, we also talked about the fact that Art served in the uh, Pacific and was involved in many island invasions. So we decided to import Cannon Falls' own Bernie Melter to uh, talk to Art about his military experience. So now you guys can get going again. <laughs> <laughs> well, Art, you must have been in, out of high school and, and uh, you enlisted or drafted? I was drafted a month before, a month before the, for Pearl Harbor. Oh, really? Yeah. There was a bunch of National Guard folks that were called up for a year, and then they were supposed to go home. Yeah. And then December 7th happened, and they yeah. stayed for the duration. Yeah. I knew then, boy. See? <laughs> the long deal. So you were in almost five years. Then. 43 months. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I wouldn't uh, See, I was never home from the day I left till I come home. I, I had 39 months overseas. Did, did you report to Fort Snelling uh, uh, for your boot camp and then they sent you off somewhere? Yeah, I, I had my boot training in uh, Fort Francis E. Warren. In, out in Wyoming? Yeah, in Wyoming. Yeah, and, yeah. and then, uh, well, they cut that as soon as Pearl Harbor, or they, they cut it short. So it, this was the first of the year we, we were sent on to at Riverside, California, and that's where we joined the 27th Division. And, where, I, and I, I was with the 27th Division from then until I got out. Were you an infantryman? And uh, were, you, were you in the infantry? No, I was lucky. I was in the quartermaster. I, oh, okay. Uh, I, uh, helped feed, I, I helped feed the outfit, although I had, I was, like when we were in the combat, they had so many guys that worked right behind the, the front lines, and I, it seemed like I was always there. 
<laughs> I don't know what they're always, they, I, well, well, they get rid of me or I was got done the job pretty good. <laughs> in, in the Marine Corps, we'd have called you a supply pogue. Yeah. Yeah. You worked in supply, quartermasters. Yeah. But that was always a good place to be because you could use some yeah. of your spare goodies to trade for other things. But I, I still remember the when the first operation we went on, we uh, they were just part of the company going going in 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 the end of this operation. We didn't know where they didn't know where they were going. Well, well, anyway, I wasn't on it. But when they had oh. the maneuvers off uh, off uh, Hawaii. Yeah, uh, some of the guys got so seasick that they, they they didn't want them to go on this operation. And about two days before we were going to take off, they called right into the supply office and says, "You're going." So, so I, the first time I went over the side, it was a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, were you on an APA, uh -huh. a ship? Two yeah, ship? we're on attack transport. Yeah, the, the APAs. So, so you had to go over the side on a on an, on an landing landing net. Yeah, and crawl down, down the side down into and dropped in, dropped into the well, boat. Into one of those and we boats. circled yeah. around out there a while, and yeah. all at once, in in we went. But, but that, but that uh, was um, that was just a practice, right? Yeah, yeah, that was a real thing. But we're lucky there wasn't wasn't too many jabs on that side of the island. What, what yeah. island were? That was Macon. Oh, Macon. Okay. Yeah, see, yeah. The Marines took tar off. Sure. At, at the same time. Yeah. And see, and then, then as soon as soon as we uh, took the island, in, in three days, why? And then the, the morning before um, we were going to pull out out of there, was, oh, I suppose about three in the morning, you could see a big glow in the sky, and that was. The Liskin Bay, the, the baby carrier, that was sunk. Oh, okay. And I, um, yeah, I think that was. And see, see, we yeah. had um, some of the survivors on on that boat we were on. So, I, well, I got a picture of it in the mag, the World War II magazine, of uh, of. of where two of those sailors were buried at sea, and I was, i know I'm in in that in that picture because sure. they called us all on, all up on sure. deck for for the funeral. Did you, you now? You went back to the big ship on one of the little boats off the island. Yeah, and you went back to the big ship. Where'd you go from Macon? From Macon, they sent us right back back to to Schofield Barracks. You know? Okay. And then we got then it wasn't over. It wasn't. Uh, Couple of couple of weeks or so, they sent sent part of the company down, down, and we got ready for the ne next one. See, we went out in. Did um, you practice out of Molokai, or what's that? Did you practice out of Molokai? It's a little island off of Hawaii. No, we didn't do any practicing after after oh. uh, after that. You just but, came but back. We, we went down and uh, and uh, what we did we. Uh, it was just like these uh, stone boat boats, you know, what they have with a, with a, uh, it's, it's a, it's on, 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 uh, on, on, uh, it was a platform up about that far and, uh, and with runners on it. Yeah. And, and then the cable on the end of it, and we, we pa packed um, uh, rations on it, uh, on it, and then it seen that, and there was, and they they pull a, a, a waterproof paper over it, and then they were strapped uh, strapped down. And I don't know how many of them then we fix, fixed up. So so see when they went into the in the side pan, they they bring that stuff in the shore and they drop it off and and uh, and then and the tanks or some uh, would, would come down and and hook onto that cable and drag them up on the beach some places. Oh, so okay. so after we got on, we had to go hunt hunt for 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 our stuff. The, the boats and stuff to bring them back. Or? Yeah. Did, did you have uh, C ra or K rations? Oh yeah, we had to see the K. That's what we uh, delivered to the. Did you have? Did you ever have it? In your island campaigns, a mess hall with a cook that would cook 
rations for you? I want not not uh, not until until we got settled down. Uh, then then they start they'd cook, 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 start cooking again. A mess all. I remember one time we was on, we were on the side pan after it was Ireland was secure, and I wasn't feeling too good. I think I had a touch of dengue fever, and it rained like heck, heck the night before, and. We uh, had the rations there with another couple of guys. We were sitting there eating. I looked over to the side, and there was there was the Japanese head sticking out of the ground. Oh, <laughs> <appetizing. laughs> that really helped the appetite. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't have any problems going on a diet. <laughs> what did you think of K-rations? They were all right. They got hungry. And, and one thing, they had these, uh, uh, you remember them sea rations, uh, yeah. that, uh, that hash? Uh -huh. That was the worst damn, worst stuff I, in, in the world to eat. I could, I, and and one one time, God, I was hungry. I was hungry, and that was the only thing left. <laughs> and I thought it tasted pretty good, but then I tried it again, and that was the same cussed stuff. <laughs> in Vietnam, we had sea rations. Mm -hmm. in, in the beginning, and I was there early in 65, well, the, and they had well, the, these. Uh, the, the sea rations, they had that hash, they did, they did um, 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 bean, beans, they yeah. were pretty good. Beanie weenies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, on a spaghetti, and you can imagine having spaghetti yeah. for breakfast, yeah. cold spaghetti too. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It wasn't the best in the world. So, uh, after Macon, you went to Saipan. Saipan, okay. and then but after then in uh, Saipan and Tinian, right? Tinian, yeah, was yeah, right. Tinian set right off there. That's that big, big flat island. That's where they built the big air air base. To, yeah. uh, and took the, the B twenty nine atomic, atomic bomb yeah. To, into yeah. Because I had a ringside seat when they took that. We were down on the uh, Saipan had already been taken, and we were down down on the on the, on the beach, and, the, and you, you could see them over there. Well, and part of our see, we had a duck company that, uh, yeah. and they, they, they yeah. used the they used all our ducks to, to haul the Marines in, yeah. uh, so help bring the Marines in. On, on. well, anyway, that e evening, I, I was, I was I, there was a bunch of dive bombers over there. You see, you could see them over there. They were. Or, Bombing over there, and all at once they hit their ammunition dump. I didn't see so darn much junk in the air. I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that, so yeah. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, that and, and but as a quartermaster, you were issuing supplies yeah. out to yeah. different outfits yeah. within your division, or to, to anybody that came in. Our, our division. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. And and then okay, and then you were making, and you were, where did where did you go from there? From there, we went um, we went down to the New Hebrides. Okay. Said they're going to send us down to a nice rest area, <laughs> and we got down in a spiritual Santos down there. All it was was a, was I think it was palm olive, peach, coconut plantation. Yep. <laughs> the one. I mean, they did a coconut tree after another and rose, you know, and then they'd probably be 50, 60 feet wide to be another another row. It was dangerous to be around there with a rain, they'd have coconuts falling off. Yeah. <laughs> well, worse than that, as I understand it, the, the Japanese snipers would tie themselves in the tree yeah. up there, and then they'd snipe at you with their yeah. little 25 caliber rifles. Yeah. Did you? What did you carry? Is uh, did you have an M1? No, I had a car, car, carbine. Carbine. Oh, yeah. A Thirty caliber carbine. Yeah. What did you think of that? They were all right. I. They're not very good out of five hundred yards. Because one time I got in, we were looking out for souvenirs, and they flushed out some Japanese. And I, I know. The, no, I got, got a couple of them. With your carbine. Yeah. You, most of the guys carried M1s, though, right? Yeah. By that time of the war, you had M1s? Yeah. 
Because I know the Marines went into Guadalcanal with 03 Springfields. Yeah, yeah, Springfield. That's what I, we were issued first until, until we got over, got over. That was a good weapon, Yeah, the Springfield was. You could hit out at 600 yards. You know? yeah. <laughs> it had those sights, at leaf yeah. sights, yeah. Mm. So then from uh, the New Hebrides, you were on what they called R&R, &R, rest and relaxation. <laughs> yeah. And then we, um, from there, we headed for, uh, headed north, of course, up up to, and then we got up to, uh, you ever went to the Ulysses? The where? The, the, yeah, there's a little island up there in a, in a big lagoon. And, uh, uh, it, it was a, uh, uh, where a bunch of ships were, ship, I've never seen the guts of many ships in my life. Would that be a ball? There were hundreds of them. There. See, that's, they were getting ready, ready to go into Okinawa. Oh, okay. And that's when we went into Okinawa. But Okinawa wasn't, wasn't, wasn't too bad. We just, well, with our, our infantry, they got the, got the hell shot out of them. You know, they, were, they, they were right in the outskirts of Naha. And, and when when they were relieved, and they and they sent us up to the other end of the island, and our fighting on were done for there. Yeah, there was a sh on Okinawa. Naha was down here, and there was a Shuri, what they call the Shuri Line, Shuri <laughs> Castle. Yeah. And I guess there was a lot of coral, and and uh, they had a lot of foxholes. The yeah. Japanese did. Yeah. And so to take that, you guys in the army that had to go south to Naha, you had to get through that line, and that yeah. was pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. So, but you were responsible for getting rations ashore. Yeah. And so the troops could eat and yeah. water and all those sort of yeah. things. Yeah, we had to pack all that stuff in. So, and then uh, uh, how did you did, issue them out? Did you? One time when, when we were on Okinawa, and it was when them Kimasami, um, planes come in, you know, and, and one, we were there on the, on the beach down there all, and all at once here, the radar didn't pick that guy up. He, he, I bet he wasn't 50 feet in the air. You could see him when he went, went by there, but he, I don't think he stayed in the air long. <laughs> did, you shoot, did you shoot at him with your carbine? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> did, you have, did you have 50 caliber machine guns and and 30s attached to your outfits? Uh, Do you have machine gunners? No, no we, we, we might have had some 50 caliber guns, but... How about the Browning automatic rifle? Were, were, did you have those? What's that? The BAR, the Browning automatic rifle? No, we didn't have any of them in our, our, oh. our company. Oh. But I tell you, one time over there, and, and when we were on Saipan, there was a, a plane that would come over every night, you know, they, they just harass us. Uh, and they called him Washing Machine Saipan Charlie. Char they called yeah. him Saipan Charlie. Saipan and, Charlie. And, yeah. and we heard a rumor there one day uh, that it got in some bigger anti aircraft guns. And the guy says, they said, if he comes over the night, he's going to get it. So, so uh, here he come, and and the, you know when they them, when they set send an aircraft, there must be four or five bursts, you know, go off. He set the cussed flame on fire on the first first burst up there. Did you have searchlights? And and, and the damn plane he kept went out toward the sea. And he kept going in there all once down in the ocean. He went. Did did they have searchlights then, or on the beach? Cert, you know, searchlights to try to. Oh yeah, they had searchlights. And then they'd, I, pick, they'd pick them up and. And the navy had barrage balloons above their ships. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And one one time off the coast of Okinawa. Uh, uh, all the uh, ships are all congregated out there. The moon, moon was bright. You could, oh, you could really see them out there. And all at once, they must have had an air, uh, air warning, and uh, and heard them out there. 
uh, their bullhorns, make smoke, make smoke. <laughs> and, and, you know, and next thing you knew, you all could see out there was like a big fog out there. Sure. You, you couldn't see nothing. The destroyers come yeah, by. They, they had them covered yeah, up. Yeah, the destroyers came by and made smoke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You you come from a long line of military people. Uh, your 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 family. Yeah. Going way back, and like I said in the beginning, in Cannon Falls, yeah. after the Civil War. Yeah. They formed a Grand Army of the Republic post. It was like a yeah. VFW or a legion. Yeah. But they formed a post here, and they called them barracks. And and uh, McKinley yeah. was the the, the yeah. name. That now that was yeah. related to you. That that McKinley. Uh, yeah, I mean he was related in some way into us. Yeah. Yes, he's he's buried out in that Cherry Valley Cemetery, I think. Oh, okay. So. From the Civil War, did you have, did you have any of your relatives uh, fight in World War One, or, or get called up for World I, War One? I had, a, I had an uh, uncle that was over there, but I don't think he got into combat. I don't sure, think. Sure, sure. Well, I'll tell you what. Speaking as an old artilleryman, uh, if it hadn't been for the supply folks keeping us, you know, we called it beans, bandages, and bullets. And the, and the supply folks kept the supply. But I will say one thing for the Navy. They really took care of it. So, uh, they kept it, uh, there was no, uh, no harassment, uh, bombing. That was your story of the war. Yeah. You ended up on Okinawa. Yeah. And were you there for the occupation? No, I got out of there. What, what happened, the... Uh, we were on Okinawa, and they uh, uh, once in a while they'd send a few guys back. Uh, call it rotation. Uh, they send them back to the stage. Sure. You and uh, you got you, so many points, and you yeah, could go home. Yeah, when, well, that, that was a little different. That wasn't a point system. Oh, they. Okay. Um, uh, you'd, you'd either go come back to your out, own, own outfit, or they'd re reassign you. Well, anyway, they, uh, they had a quota of guys that would go, and they pulled the names out of the hat, and I, and I, and I wasn't one of them. And then the next day, they come out and said that uh, there was two guys that was, was picked, wasn't eligible, because they come over in April uh, overseas, and, and, the, and the ones in, in the, in March, we're eligible. Well I, well, I was the one to come over in March. So they put the names in the hat. Well, I wasn't around any, anyway. I was on detached service, and, and, and they come around, and then one guy could go, and we, I think it was 41 names he said in the hat, and they pulled mine out. They did. And, and God. <laughs> and, so when I hit the States, I was automatically out if I wanted to get out. So I got out before the war ended. I got out in the uh, uh, latter part of June of, of well, four, I think 40, probably... 45. I figured I'd seen enough hell. And <laughs> I think they probably uh, had figured the war was going to be over with yeah. pretty shortly anyhow. Uh, so you were here in the when States. They let me out, I figured the war was going to be over. Cause it, <laughs> Had they dropped the, bomb, the atomic bomb yet? No, they hadn't. They hadn't. Okay. So where did you out process at Fort McCoy? No, I come out of, of uh, out of, up here. Oh, it's Snelling. It's more Snelling. And but I'll tell you, one of the happiest moments in my life was when the, the day before we got into into Frisco, I uh, it, oh the sea was rough. And I didn't really feel too hot, so I went in and lay, uh, lay, laid down, and uh, and I didn't even go to the mess hall and, uh, and supper. And 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 in the, in the morning, I woke up and everything was a constant quiet. And I walked up on 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 deck, and we were just going under the Golden Gate Bridge. Boy, it was a happy moment. I they blew the ship's horns. And yeah, they were all happy. Yeah, I was. I, I had made. I had made it. 
<laughs> you did. You did. So you got your little ruptured duck and put that on your uniform. Well, oh yeah, that, that was. Uh, I still got the shirt in my my apartment over there. And what I mean by ruptured duck is the guys that got discharged in World War II were given <clears throat> a little round circle. It was an eagle, and all the servicemen in slang called it a ruptured duck, <laughs> and they sewed it on their uniforms. And a lot of them wore their uniforms when they came home. They didn't have any civilian clothes. And it would have the ruptured duck on there indicated that it was honorable service. And they weren't a deserter. That was the big thing. And then they came home. So when Johnny came marching home, you looked for the ruptured duck. And sailors, soldiers, Marines, and airmen wore those. So, mm -hmm. Did you use the GI Bill and go to school when you got out? No, I didn't. <clears throat> well, I probably should have, but I didn't. Well, you were successful in life anyhow. I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, wasn't no dummy, maybe, but I, I didn't empower myself when I went to school there. I just wanted to get out and run the hills and hunt. Or, <laughs> were, were you a squirrel hunter? Oh yeah, God. And that helped you in the service then, because there were a lot of people that never saw a rifle and didn't yeah. know which end was the bullet came out of. No, I, I was, I was pretty good with a gun. Well, after, after all these years, I want to thank you for your service. Yeah. See, I, see, I am a lifetime member, you know, of the VFW. In fact, I'm, a, I'm one of the original members. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know, there can't be many of us left. No, there aren't. There aren't. Because uh, Wolf, Wonstrom was in there, I don't remember then. Well, I came back in 1976 and I joined the VFW. And, and I actually joined in 1965, but I was active in 76. And a lot of the World War II guys were still there. Yeah. You know, Toddy Bramer and, and uh, well, there, there were a bunch. Gunner, Gunner Agee. And so you guys built that club by your own hands and, and uh, as an alternative to the American Legion. And I know that you, you were down there building that clubhouse, laying block and all of that. So you did a good job. It's still there and it's still going, serving the community. Mm -hmm. So again, thank you for your service. Yeah. Well, they did the best they could. <laughs>